Welcome back to 5 Minute Knives, the channel that doesn't trust atoms because they make up everything. Today, we're going to talk about the Bark River Tracker Knife, which is a beast of a knife, and I'm really excited to get into it, plus a custom sheath for it. But first, let's try to pay a bill. Okay, so... This knife was sent in to me by Pat O'Brien, good guy, been with us for a while, ordered a couple of sheaths, was telling me how he was really never on YouTube in the past, and then some friends suggested that uh, he make an account and look something up, I forget what it was, but one of the first things he clicked on was 5 Minute Knives, and here we are buddies. So, Pat is a subscribe starian, meaning he helps support me every month so I can make these videos for you guys. And in return for the subscribe Starians, although I know I haven't been posting a lot of extra content on there or anything like that, I really should. And I should find the time to do it. I'm just kind of busy making cheese, you know? So anyway, Pat's been supporting me for a while. We did a sheath giveaway because that's kind of my lazy giveaway over there. And it turned out to not be such a lazy giveaway because, of course, Pat sent in the most difficult knife possible for me to make a sheath for. This is the leather sheath that the Bark River comes with. And let me tell you, as far as leather goes, this is good looking. Well, it's a little, you know, the lines kind of do that. It's bulky. You can wear it vertical. You can wear it scout. Um, one thing I do not like is when you go ahead and, you know, deploy the thumb strap. When you go to remove the knife, you're going to be cutting along this strap here. So you got to kind of get this out of the way. And here we go. This knife is a beast. You've seen trackers before. I'm going to go ahead and get the sheath out of here because we have a new sheath to show you pretty soon. But first, I want to talk about the knife. Look at this stock, man. This is a beast. Black and blue. Looks like G10 layered uh, two by two. One by one. One by one. Some jimping here. Multiple grips for this knife, too. I mean, you can kind of hold it down here. You can... Get over here, you can get over here. So you get a few different grips. Very unique handle design, for sure. Very unique handle design. Very handsome handle. And the way that this fits my hands, like, it's it's actually fairly comfortable. It's a little blocky, and I find this material to be a little on the slick side. They do give you a lanyard hole here, but it's a little on the uh, tiny side there. You can probably slip some paracord through that. I would definitely recommend a lanyard, Pat. For this this could come flying out of your hand it is a chunker munker this knife what a beast this back river back river tracker at a michigan a2 steel this thing costs a pretty penny too let me tell you i'm looking it up right now i'm on nice ship free and it's 374.95 they offer waterproofing on the sheath for another 20 dollars okay so you'd be out about $400 to get this with a waterproof, well, with a leather sheath that's been waterproofed, water treated. Here's the blade itself. I don't think he's really used it for much. Some very light scratching right there. Some of that could have been by the sheath making, the heat, and I don't know. Maybe he had that on there. Either way, once the second he uses this in the woods, he's going to have a lot more scratches. So here's that. I do believe this may be like an apocalypse survival blade for Pat. I'm not really sure. Uh, Pat, let us know in the comments what you're using this for. But man, what a beast. It's heavy, too. This is a heavy guy. I think it's 24 ounces. Let me look. Yep. 24 ounces, blade thickness, 0.265 thick. So over, it's like more than a quarter inch thick right here. That's crazy. The blade length is 7.5 inches. The overall length is 13.4. Made in Escananaba. Escananaba? Escanaba. Made in Escanaba, Michigan. Uh, the sheath is set up for right-handed carry. And there you go. You got your tracker. You've seen tracker designs before, but this is a pretty one. So, of course, Pat sends in the most difficult knife possible for me to make. Oh, free sheath? Yeah. <laughs> you know? This will take Joe a few hours. That'll be fun. So, because of the thickness of the stock, this sheath did not want to cooperate. Here's the sheath. And it did come out really nicely. I did put a couple of Molly attachments here that work like so, Pat. And I just wanted to show you, you can kind of attach this to your pack, you know. And then um, this here, where is it? 
Then this here clips in and you're good to go. I put black finishing washers on here for you. I didn't have blue in stock. I was out of blue washers. So I just threw the black on there. I actually like the look of it. Black eyelets, me logo, and I, uh, a darker gray in the back. Gray uh, goes really well with blue, as you can see. So here's how this works. Semi-open back design. You're going to want to go ahead and get this knife started in here. You get her started like so, and then you're going to want to straighten everything out. And then there she goes. She clicks in, and then here, you're just going to pinch that together. And that's it. She's in. You're not going to have any noise, any BS, nothing. Open back design, so I didn't put any drainage holes or anything. Again, push this to the side, and then she comes out, straight back in, and then bam. There you go. So you got to be a little rough with it. That's the point. You're going to get some shaving down here. We're already starting to get a little bit there. That's okay. Let that ride out. And over time, that'll work itself out. It'll make it like a channel. And then this, all you do for the tab is you just push straight down on it. And then you can use this ramp to just kind of pull everything out. Don't worry about sliding the blade along the kydex here. And also, if you notice, there's a little bit of powder and stuff like that. Funny story about that. Here, there's a little powder right here. See? You're going to have that for a little bit. But eventually, it'll go away, bud. And it shouldn't cause any harm. Uh, basically, what happened was I keep my sheaths together as I work on them. They go through the press. They come out. You've seen in my videos where I just kind of drill all the holes, get everything together, shape it, you know, sand it for a little while, get it really tight. And then I separate the two pieces, clean out the insides, place the eyelets, fit the knife, and we're good. This knife did not want to cooperate almost immediately as I was drilling the holes, it separated right away. And I know I had the heat right because I use an infrared temp gun. So it's not about the heat. It's just because this thing is so thick that it was just pushing the kydex apart and uh, just being a real pain on me. So this separated instantly, and I thought I was going to have to start over. I did not have more of this material in stock, so I said, hell no, we're going to do it. Uh, so I stuck it out, and I'm really glad I did because it turned out awesome. Guys, don't send me any more trackers. <laughs> I'll tell you that because they're freaking weird. Making sheets for them is really weird. But look, it works. Pinch that and bingo. What a cool sheath. What a big upgrade for Pat. And I'm glad too, because he's a great guy. I had to offset these. So again, this goes on his pack and this will ride on his pack. Another 24 ounces for you to lug around, bud. Not light. That being said, you know, in the end times, this would be very confidence inspiring, especially for like, not even so much zombie times or anything like that. But I mean, with a knife like this, if you were determined enough, I think you could build yourself a log cabin. You know what I mean? There's really not a lot you can do. The only thing is, is that, you know, could the body hold out? Because this thing's heavy and you're really going to feel it in the forearm big time, the wrist and forearm. So I don't know about extended use, but man, it's a beast. Costs a pretty penny. Very nice to look at. Just a good looking knife. Very, very capable. I mean, here's the tip. Can we see the tip? Whoa. Look at that. That is a beast, dude. So anyway, um, because I had to drill the eyelets, you know, put them back together, clamp it together, and drill the eyelets that way, we do have a little bit of dust in there. I hit it with the um, compressor, but I don't think it got everything out. So, Pat, over time, that dust will go away. Continue to draw your sheath safely if you can, bud. Look, and just line up. And notice, if you get stuck, like right around here, that's because your handle's catching See, this handle sticks out a lot. It's catching. You have to line it up with this, and then it'll go in. Press, and you're locked. You're secure. What do you think, buddy? Do you like this? I like this. I'm happy with it. Anyway, guys, got a little treat for you. I got into the video editing software and decided to put a little something together. I've been getting some trolls lately hitting me up, and I thought it would be fun to, I don't know, feature some of their dumb comments. So I think once a week, if somebody's going to say something stupid to me, I'm going to feature them in Troll of the Week. And that could be a good way to keep the stupidity to a minimum. Uh, I was also thinking about doing All-Star of the Week, like who's like my best subs and, you know, the coolest people on Subscribestar and so on. That being said, it's not as funny. You know, you guys that are well-behaved, you're not as funny as the bad ones. You know, the bad ones are freaking hilarious. The guys that like send me something weird and uh, we have a case right now, so... Let's take a look at my uh, directorial debut. You guys let me know how I did. 
Here we go. Here's my first little short film here called uh, Troll of the Week number one. Let's check it out. Brought to you by Dragon Scale Concealment. It's Troll of the Week, featuring the best and brightest of YouTube users. This week's troll is Martin Miller, who commented, The Manix 2 lock is not remotely similar to an Exus lock. I just subscribed after watching your White River backpacker vid with the superb Kydex cheese you made for it. So sweet. I plan on sending you several fixed plays for your Kydex cheese. Probably a Bradford Guardian 3, or a TRC Classic Freedom. To which I replied, Then Martin helpfully added, You just lost my Kydex business, smarty pants, 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 pants. Oh well, better luck next time, me. <laughs> anyway, that's all for this week, but I'm sure we'll be seeing you trolls again real soon. Far always kills me so i know very disturbing <laughs> very weird but that's how i feel about trolls i had a lot of fun editing that that guy that said the stupid stuff i mean he just hit me up saying the axis lock is nothing like this lock on the manix 2 and that's just simply not true that one was modeled after the other i think the mechanism might be completely different but to the end user it's still a pinch grippy you know lock in the style of the axis lock so i conflate the two and my response to him was just kind of agreeing, saying, oh, yeah, I just kind of mix these up sometimes because one was based on the other. And, you know, and that's great. Would you like me to feature, you know, your sheath builds on the channel? That was my response. It was just kind of like, oops, yeah, I mix those up sometimes. And would you like me to show your sheaths on the channel? And his response made me laugh so hard. You just lost my business, smarty pants. Like, how do I not make a little video about that? I have a platform. I have dudes to entertain over here. And, uh... I'm sorry, if, if you say something stupid, I'm going to make a dumb video about it. So that was really dumb, and I thought it was really funny. And I also don't care if he buys a sheath, so see you later, bud. <laughs> he won being blocked from the channel. <laughs> so anyway, I thought it was goofy. We'll see if we continue. That was actually a lot of work. If more trolls pop up in the future, I'll certainly consider it. You guys let me know what you think. Did I do a good job? Was that really funny to you? You know, and that far is just, it's just brutally in your face. I mean... Oh, what the timing, every, I mean, it's, to me, it's moi. So I thought that was perfect. Anyway, you guys are amazing. I hope I made you smile today. Hat O'Brien, you've been a really good subscriber and a great guy. I'm so happy you stumbled on my little YouTube channel here so long ago and have stuck with me. Very cool, buddy. And I did talk to him on the phone for a while the other day, and he's a great guy. Super cool guy. Getting some stuff from Nico. Very, very cool. I'm happy. Oh, guys, by the way, we're offering holsters, Cerakote options. That's through Nico. Still connected to my business, but that's his end of things. And uh, I'm just sticking with the she's and the YouTubes here. So that's what I'm doing. But man, this came out nice. It's real sharp looking. One more draw so you can see. It's actually not hard. You just got to be real manly with it. And then boom, pop her back and we're good. That's not too bad, man. That's cool. It's cool looking. I think this will serve you very well, bud. So anyway, anybody else needs she's besides the, the weirdo that I lost his business because I agreed with him? You know, be normal. Don't send in weird trackers and stuff. Send me send me nice knives. Nice, normal, simple, little four-inch saber grind knives would be outstanding because everything you guys have sent in for the past two months has been really awkward. You sent me the most awkward knives. I mean, what's next? Like one of those crisp blades? Like what's coming next? One of those fantasy dagger designs? And here's the thing. I like money, so I just keep saying yes to all of you. And this one was a freebie. So once again, get on Subscribestar. You do win free stuff over there, and there's like four people, so your odds are very good. And I know a lot of people are afraid to pay a dollar a month, but he won like a $120 sheath here. <laughs> so if anything, Pat's making out like a bandit. So yeah, get on Subscribestar. Help me out. You guys know I write books. Joe Valen writer. And uh, that's about it for me. I'm really excited about the future of the channel. Keep sending your knives in, though, so I have stuff to show. This is a really cool knife. A beast. But you have to be a beast of a man. Now, do I recommend this knife for almost 99% of you? Absolutely not. You know, a lot of the guys watching this channel would probably have a hard time wielding this thing, to be honest. It is a little slick in the handle. That being said, if you can hang on to this damn thing, you have a hell of an implement. 
and I don't see what you can't do with it. Again, we keep getting dust here, Pat. Don't freak out if that happens to you. It's kind of normal. Uh, you can blow it out with a compressor a little bit more. That may help. But it should be okay. O over time, there'll be no dust. So you'll be all right. Keep oiling it. Keep treating this A2 steel very well. And it'll last you. I mean, this is going to last Pat his whole lifetime, his kid's lifetime, their, their lifetime. That's the thing about the Bark River Nice guys. You all know that they're very, very high quality. The thing is, is if you got it like that, you got an extra four, four bills laying around, you can have one of these trackers, but you also better have a gym membership. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, you guys are amazing. I will see you next time on 5-Minute Night.